So far, every upside target objective has been met from our historical volatility versus momentum backtest. There is one more target to observe before requiring an extension of the backtest to factor in the upper bounds of the second and standard deviations. Welcome back to the channel on this Taco Tuesday. This is Arca and let's dive into ticker symbol CLNV. Let's kill them, team. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by once again. Let's go ahead and dive in to ticker symbol CLNV. And we're going to start off right off the bat with the statistics here because uh, pretty much every single target that we've been uh, uh, mentioning here from the uh, historical volatility versus momentum back test has been met with grace, right? So go ahead and notice here that the last target that we were observing well, uh, before the final upper bound, right? We were looking at a move of about 145%, 145 spots, 73%, which is the average upside thrust, AKA mean. And from the firing of the signal of, you know, right down here at this candle here on September 6th, right? So September 6th, we were we got a read, uh, you know, of let's see, 11 total iterations have against the upside I'm sorry, 10 iterations of the 11 throughout the entire trading history of the 12 hour time frame for CLNV have guessed the upside correctly out of the 11 total, right? So now what I'm doing here is measuring any time that volatility has contracted into a critical zone of contraction uh, and started an expansion phase paired with an upside pivot on stochastic momentum. I've noted that every single iteration's uh, duration, right? The upside thrust and the amount of times that uh, the, the uh, volatility versus momentum have guessed the upside correctly versus incorrectly. And that gave us from these samples, uh, from these samples here, we got this data set here. So yeah, we have a 90 spot, 909, I'm sorry, 99 or 909, or we can just say 91, right? So 90 spot, 91% upside accuracy with an average upside thrust, AKA the mean of 145 spots, 73% over the span of about 47 spot, three, per, uh, three days. Right, so that target was the last one that we were uh, observing, and that was giving us a target of about 539. From, remember, from, remember, I'm talking about from when we were at 220, so two cents. We were speaking, <laughs> we were speaking of a target of about 540. Right, so yes, we were able to meet that and almost dead on the money. So let's go ahead and take a look at the candle where it got fulfilled right here. It got fulfilled right to that right to that top side and take a look at the high right on the OHLC right up here. Look at the H and let me hover over that candle and take a look at that 540. Let's uh, let's hover over this and highlight it 539. Man, that couldn't have been. <laughs> I mean, within a zero spot, zero, 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 one percent, I mean, that's that's pretty nice. Right. And that goes with a 90 spot, 90 percent upside accuracy with that percent as a mean. Now, I have calculated the upper bounds and lower bounds of the first standard deviation, and that is actually leading towards a move of the upper bound of 267 spot 352 percent move to the upside. And that takes us to a target of about 803. Now. That 803 is very curious, and I and I do think that it's uh, that it, there is a probability here because of the because of the uh, I mean the con the continuation of this signal is, is powerful. So first of all, how long did it take us to get to that 145 percent move from the 47 spot three day average? So that took the asset 21 days. It took the asset 21 days to reach that 145 percent upside. And we are currently sitting at the 34th day. So let's just say that it would take the full 47 days, right? So 47 days would actually uh, entail that we would be looking at this top side by maybe October 23rd, which I guess is like two weeks away. Uh, that, I mean, that's I mean that's a real, I, I guess if it's moving in a balanced manner, sure, that, that could be the case. Right. So that, yeah, I mean, and that's considering that it would factor in the entire timing. Right. It doesn't have to take that in the, into account. Right. So we have a four day iteration here, a two day. We have a three day. There is a, a seven day iteration here. You can see the variable. Right. You can see the variance two day here, 
23 days there. This is 17 days here. This is 91, 91 days there, right? So you can see how it kind of varies. So, uh, yeah, I guess uh, uh, to the very largest or, or the, the longest point, I guess, would be to October 23rd, which I guess it's not far away, right? So which only makes me feel that any little bit or any type of catalyst here can make this thing rip to the upside and eventually meet the target and completion of the back test to the current state. Right. So meaning that we would catch every single upside starting from the lower bound of the first standard deviation at 24 spot 112 percent, which we ended up catching right about here with absolute perfection within one day of trading. Right. One day to the next from the firing of the signal. We got that target perfectly to the 219. In fact, let me see what the high was here. Yeah, it was actually 280 and the uh, price objective was set to uh, oh, 273. Wow. <laughs> So 273 and we got the 280 on the next day from the firing of the signal. That's yeah. So ever since the ever since the lower band of the first standard deviation, we've been tracking this to combat the targets of right after this to the standard deviation of 121 percent to then the uh, average upside thrust, the mean of 145 percent. And now it looks like we may be entering the probabilities of getting that top side 267% move to the upside. Now, I usually I usually invalidate the the signal as soon as we reach critical critical expansion, meaning that we in this iteration here, right? We we fired the signal from critical contraction because that's part of the signal, right? It, so we're firing it down here with an upside and expansion of volatility. So, meaning that any time that we start the signal and touch the inside of the other critical zone, that would be the end of the signal itself, which appears to be like it, but I want you to notice, and let's zoom in, that that moving average right here did not enter. It did not enter, there it is, right here, at 90, uh, let's see, 90 spot, 48%, right? Very, very, very close to the trend line that we have there. In fact, the, in fact, arguably speaking, this could be 80%. So technically it did, or 85%, right? So technically it did enter here, right? But it's still such a little read here that I almost feel like this signal could still be fired, right? And there could still be a continuation to the upside, which is, which is now uh, getting into speculative uh, territory. But I do believe that there could be a continuation to the upside to fulfill that statistical move. So if you are trying to get an idea as to how far that is from the present price, so 610 is where we closed, uh, moving up 33% to the upside takes you to that 808 uh, target, right? So let's go ahead and move on to the next chart here and see what we have. Okay, so uh, if we're suggesting 808, check this out. We're, we would be placed right about here, right? Right around there. There it is. So that means that we have that we have a, a range of resistance, right? First of all, 718 to 808. Uh, there is rhyming here with the one spot 272, right? So let's go ahead and put that right in there to about 808. Here we go. Oh, man, come on. Let's get it. There we go. Okay, so yeah, this would be uh, the top side resistance that I'm looking for, right? So looking, it's looking pretty good so far. Okay, so that doesn't mean that the play is over. That just means that the upper bound of the first standard deviation has completed its move. Uh, I still would need to, like I said in the intro, right? I, I can still calculate further. I can continue by uh, factoring in the second and uh, third uh, upper bounds and lower bounds of the first, you know, I'm sorry, second and the third standard deviation. So, yeah, there, there's a probability of a continuation here, given that the signal is still fired within volatility, right? So uh, now moving on to the next chart here, please notice that the uh, this is uh, one of my algorithms, right? So this is the uh, a, 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 this is the ARC substance, right? So substance is telling us that we could be resisting at about 693, just about seven cents. So is there anything at seven cents that we can look at? Well, of course there is. Check it out. Perfectly meeting that one spot 272 that we just spoke of. To, to kind of rhyme with the 808 target that we're getting statistically. So the one spot 272 is actually very much like the statistics that are ran by the substance indicator in, in you know, automatedly, right, or automatically. 
So that's uh, very curious. Now, my discretion here was 612 to 715. So, yeah, I think I think everything is rhyming pretty nice. Discretion, statistics, all the mathematics and ge and uh, even the uh, geometry with psychology and everything is leading up to a pretty nice uh, move. Now, I if, if we were going to go ahead and observe a move that can be observed over the course of maybe a month or two, maybe three months, uh, actually, you know what, maybe one, two, three, four. Like may, maybe a three to five month move, then uh, CLMV has the potential to sit at about 22 cents. And the reason I can say that is just simply because you can take a trend line from the top side of the formation here from this descending channel, which is a bullish formation, apply it to that area of breakout, and which would be about uh, here, right? So notice how it has a little space from the from the support. That's just because I moved it from this point here to this point here, so we can see the candle that we're presently on. That would take us to a target of about 22.20. So it's looking pretty powerful there. Now, uh, here is another uh, rhyming target. This is the reversion variant, or uh, it's a. Uh, it's an indicator that I put together based on the Bollinger Bands, and it does give me the uh, mean. Uh, for a reversion plays, right? So please notice here that we are now we close that we close that bi-weekly candle on Friday perfectly upside of the mean, which means that it's actually a bullish statement from the asset in a, and would state a continuation to the upside. Now, where is the resistance though, right? Let's look at that. Well, what do you know? Nine cents. So nine cents is what? First of all, we have 803, right? At the 267% move to the upside. Nine cents is just under the one spot 618 and our discretionary resistance that we face from the bottom side of this candle here in uh, April 2021, right? So that's about 921 uh, there. So yeah, more rhyming here within within the, uh, I'd say, yeah, I'd say anywhere. Be, man, it, this is a real possibility. 718 to about... I'd say a concentrated, a concentrated 1032 is it, definitely in the cards here, right? CLMV is looking massively bullish, and uh, yeah, the reversion variance suggesting that. So now, if we we looked at 22 cents, right, in in a in a few months, well, this is a, a symmetrical broadening wedge that we're riding right now on the biweekly, right? So if if we kind of start uh, to map out the potentials here and see if this thing could actually uh, October 23rd is what we said, right? So, uh, yeah, I guess right here, 1838 to 19 cents resistance here. So then uh, 22 cents doesn't sound so far fetch, right? So that gives us a range now. Uh, and yeah, this is 22 cents at the top here, perfectly at 22. Literally, you can see it at the uh, high of the H right up here. So now that gives us a resistance range, right? So an overall one. So we can uh, take into consideration here that let's just say 1838 at the lower bound right so 1838 to about 22 as a top side resistance and an overall price objective right so i i do think that there is a possibility for this thing to actually reach that high team okay so now let's go ahead and look over the rsi 30 minute time frame with an upside pivot in the gravitational zone here bouncing off of that sma 14 looking very bullish in the immediate short term Another very bullish uh, stance here is the bi hourly time frame sitting right at the gravitational zone of the bear, of the bull strength percentile highly likely for this to get pushed to the upside same situation here with the 4 hour time frame sitting right in the gravitational zone of the bull strength this absolute yeah there's a high likelihood that the shorter time frames are going to start pushing to the uh, to the upside here and uh, please yeah yeah please notice here this is a very healthy growth and using that SMA14 as a clear guide towards the upside uh, actually today uh, no yesterday we ended up getting a little bit of a pullback here but recovery and yet again using that SMA 14 as a bounce zone so historically speaking here on the daily time frame I mean we could still uh, continue over into the overbought percentile here all the way up to maybe even yeah about 95 percent we're currently sitting at about 81 so quite the distance away so hey hey buddy how you doing sorry guys that's actually my little guy hey baby Say hi to mom. Say hi to mom. <laughs> Sorry, guys. He's excited because mom just got here. So, uh, yeah, now uh, leading up from here, we're looking. <laughs> I just realized he did that while I, was while I was recording. Apologies, you guys. So, yeah, now looking at the three-day time frame, we have, a, we have a, I mean, a very 
distinct upside pivot here, right? And historically speaking, again, we're still looking at a potential 83% to the upside when we're sitting at about 79 spot, 39%. So if that's a, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. This thing is still suggesting upside, and uh, it's, uh, it's got a pretty clear shot at it. And uh, look at the five-day time frame RSI. It's, it's in. So these are the gravitational zones here, right? That I, that I was talking about. Like example here, we're sitting within the gravitational zone of the bit of the bull strength, right? Same here and here. Uh, this is what I mean. So these are the gravitations here. So sitting within this area here would be a gravitational zone that can pull us up. If we were to come down and face this area here, that would be a gravitation that would pull us down, right? So yeah, we have an upside pivot here on the SMA 14, upside pivot on the RSI signal, and on a five-day time frame. This is this is uh, this is quite notable, right? So this is uh, suggesting a continuation to that upside, and I do believe we may be able to get this of as of immediate. Uh, in the immediate short-term time frame, this is uh, very, very bullish. And the top side today was faced at about 638 or 658, I think it was. Let's see, high of 649, right? So huge, huge upside and pressure starting to build up here for the CLNV asset. And I definitely see an increase of volume on the bi-weekly. So this is quite powerful. All right, team. So whatever is happening here uh, for the uh, for the uh, CLNV asset, it's... Uh, it's it's got quite the presence and, and i would i mean look look at the volume here it's just continuing to rise here uh with with uh price action continuing to the upside not only that is this statistical move that we're looking at that's giving us the target of about 808 or 803 is completely backed by dmi so now we have the dmi plus aka bulls way above the bears which is down here and please notice that the average directional index the adx it's sitting at a massive 54 percent usually we tend to get excited for these statistical moves when it's sitting at minimum 25 percent which would indicate that there is a strong trend towards uh towards the the leading team in this case the leading team is uh, or are the bulls right so <laughs> the bulls are leading here with a 55 that's uh that's yeah and look at this. I didn't even notice it until now. 12-hour bullish engulfing. Wow. All right. So uh, I, I usually like to, uh, you know, print these, you know, after a downside, right? But I still can't help but to notice the simple fact that we have a huge uh, bullish engulfing there on the 12-hour. Right. So, yeah, this is uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at here for CLNV. Congratulations if you did have some of those entries from down there. But uh, from when we originally signaled this. Right. But, yeah, I, I do see a continuation to the upside here and a pretty massive one at that. OK, team. So I need I need I need for everybody to be very careful when trading, especially tomorrow. OK, team, we have FOMC minutes and I think we're going to be getting the PPI or the producer price index. Uh, data tomorrow, right? So that can, you know, we can have some movement in the market, but especially due to the FOMC. And then even more so with CPI released in the following day into Thursday, okay, team? So please, please, please watch out over the mar uh, over the markets in the coming days. Please take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos as just a form of entertainment as I cannot suggest for you to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. I need you to do your own due diligence and everything will be cool, cool. But with that said, team, I wish you well, a very, very good night, and I will catch you at the bell. Manana, adios.